Yeah, good day everyone. Welcome to Dynamism. Today I'm going to be giving you a thoughtful revision of a powerful podcast by Apostle Jesus Simon on prayer. Please sit tight while you're listening to me. So the sermon we are going to be talking about today is the message on prayer, a very powerful sermon by Apostle Jesus Simon. So there are so many things I learned, a powerful things I learned in this sermon. So let me just be talking about the overview. This sermon emphasizes the importance of having a structure and a consistent prayer life, labeling it as systematic. It explores the impact of prayer on the believer's life when practiced systematically, contrasting this with the less effective sporadic approach that many people do or adopt. So there are so many key points I coined out from this matter. So I'm going to be giving you the key point period to when I'm going to play the message. So the number one key point is the definition of a system, systematic prayer. So I'm going to be paraphrasing my own, in my own way the way I understood it. Systematic prayer involves establishing a consistent routine approach to prayer more like the apostle practice of the the hour of prayer this approach enhances the power and effectiveness of prayer in a believer's life so the second thing i also learned is what the biblical basics for systematic prayer so act 3 1 and mark 1 34 to 37 serves as a primary references illustrating the apostle's dedication to prayer at a specific times and jesus habit of praying early in the morning this example underscores the significance of regularity and structure in prayer. So, the next point are the four purposes of prayer. Number one, for fellowship and transformation. Number two, for petition and request. Number three, for creation and spiritual legislation. And number four, for welfare and words intercession. So, the next thing I also learned is adjusting prayer life to life stages. Apostle Joshua Simon stresses the need to adapt to one prayer routine to fit different life stages and responsibilities. This adaptation ensures that one's prayer life remains robust and effective despite changing circumstances. Please be grace upon every ministry you admire also resides in their message so please make sure you listen to this message don't just listen to this message make sure you soak yourself until this message becomes life to you please make sure you share this message the power of a systemic prayer life please write it down the power of a systemic prayer life please underline the word systemic many people teach on prayer many people pray many people talk about prayer but many believers have not been able to draw the richness that is captured in the prayer ministry largely because their prayer life is not systemic in acts chapter 3 and verse 1 we are considering the power of a systemic prayer life acts chapter 3 and verse 1 let's read together ready one to read now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer somebody said the hour of prayer the hour of prayer there was a time dedicated it became a ritual it became habitual they even named it the hour of prayer you see the power of prayer it's not just in the activity alone but the consistency the consistency of that fellowship now i've taught you that prayer achieves many things in the life of the believer let me quickly do a recap for you there are four four things that prayer achieves in the life of the believer according to scripture number one prayer is a channel for fellowship and transformation fellowship and transformation I think that is Luke 29. Did I get that right? And verse 9 or thereabout. The Bible says, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment became white and glistering. So prayer was given primarily as a tool for fellowship that culminates to our transformation. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you Christ-like in experience. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. So that is the first biblical assignment of prayer as a tool for fellowship and transformation. Number two, prayer 
is a tool or a platform to make petitions and obtain requests prayer is a platform to make petitions and obtain requests the bible says that should be matthew chapter 11 i believe and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith and then he veers off to talk about prayer mark is it mark help me mark mark 11 24 he said what things soever ye desire when ye pray did i get that right Bel believe that ye receivest them and thou shalt have them so there is a prayer request called what things soever no matter what it is it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them hallelujah philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 we read it earlier on it says to be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication let your request be made known to god so prayer is a platform for making petitions and obtaining requests number three prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation god is not the only person you talk to when you pray in prayer you can talk to things in prayer you can talk to spirits you are given the liberty to use the platform of prayer and create possibilities in your life are we together even god who call it the things that be not as though they were you can create spiritual possibilities you can make decrees it says and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody unto the one who made the decree Thou shalt decree a thing. Your Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. So prayer is a platform that allows you to create possibilities, program possibilities in your life. Finally, prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Warfare, establishing the victory of Christ over your life and warding of the forces, the arsenals of darkness that continue to fight the speakings of God over your life. These are, among others, I believe, the four biblical assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. But you see, your prayer life will not be rich until it is systemic in the case of the apostles they had the hour of prayer and the bible calls it the ninth hour in the life of jesus we find his prayer life the bible gives us a picture of his prayer life in mark chapter 1 from verse 34 look his busy schedules and see how he was able to carve out a systemic approach to his prayer life mark 1 let's begin our reading from verse 34 mark 1 34 help us media the bible says and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils this is from his crusade now he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 we're reading to 37 the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed this was a a a habitual practice of jesus because his day was full of activities you need to picture the life of jesus everybody thronging upon him moving from city to city and he did not have that time to pray in the afternoon but early in the morning it was a habit the apostles also started learning it the bible says simon and they that were with him followed after him jesus was not just prayerful he was systemic with his prayer look up please many believers are not able to excel and enjoy the wealth and the blessings that come with the prayer ministry because we have not created a systematized approach to prayer we largely freelance our prayer or motivated by the reality of a situation that challenges you 
then you may now give some attention are we together believers were never designed to pray only during emergencies believers were never designed to pray only during needs Believers were never designed to pray only when you have a program. The Bible says in Luke 18 and verse 1 that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Let's assume that you are a student in any of the high institutions of learning here. Because of the nature of your life and the phase of life that you are in, you may have a bit of luxury of time because your focus will largely be schoolwork and then you have the luxury of time. And it is possible to pray at any time once you are not having your lectures you may have fellowship or just your personal time but now fast forward imagine that that same student now becomes a worker say in an oil and gas company you use that student template they will first suck you out of the work are we together now and when they throw you away both your spiritual life and your means your stream of income will both dry up you have to reinvent a system that now suits the current context of your life this is the problem with many believers you had the luxury say for instance you were not married at that point you had the luxury you could lock up yourself for three days you didn't need to obtain permission from any man as a woman you can lock yourself and pray now you are married you are a wife probably a mother you have other responsibilities that luxury of freelancing your prayer life is no longer there because being prayerful will not be an excuse for failing in your family life are we together so you have to now create a system it takes intelligence to pray effectively not just spirituality that intelligence component is where believers have thrown it away we just have a blind zeal there needs to be intelligence when you study your life and you find out the way that God works with you if you are a leader and you have a lot of commitment towards people you would want to maximize your night times you want to maximize your mornings in principle I have found the night times to be the best for me for various reasons because it affords you a greater sense of focus are we together now there are moments where you can take dedicated times out maybe a whole day but generally speaking there are certain levels of growth i'm saying this sincerely ask any great leader they will tell you the convenience of prayer right now for them was not the way it used to be years ago if you are to be honest because of the responsibilities that have come upon that person you can be praying and someone comes to disturb you now you are living in the same house with five of your relatives and while you are praying the one who is not born again is enjoying himself and playing one song and just when you want to position your your heart and you are in the same house you can't drive them remember you are trusting god for the salvation of that person are we together or while you are trusting god to increase you now you live in a house where you are a christian and you are surrounded say by non-christians and certain liberty of expression that you may have you understand you can shout you can roll you can do everything now you are limited in many ways listen believers you will not grow spiritually and you will not be rich in your prayer life until you study your life and in partnership with the holy spirit design an effective template that insists that you do not compromise on prayer regardless your schedule because the devil is a master at giving you a justification i'm busy you know the way my life is and two days becomes one week becomes one year and before you know it you will simply be admiring the days when you used to be prayerful and there are consequences according to scripture when believers do not invest time to pray you are bought the potential for quality fellowship with the spirit of god and then all of these things that i mentioned will no longer be found in your life